great day. Great stretch of stream here. Boulders upstream, boulders behind us, boulders downstream. Quick paced water, a lot of oxygen being introduced. Yeah. Great for caddis. Yeah, this is good habitat. For, for dries and pupas. Yep. Um, I know in the past I've learned from you and from my own experience that sometimes the pupa isn't always the same color as the adult. In fact, that's usually the case. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And it's one of the things that can be challenging when you're out during a caddis hatch. So maybe you're fishing dries and you're not having any luck and you want to try a pupa pattern, but you're not sure what color because they're not going to be the same color no. as the adult. And you can collect the adult pretty easily or see it running around, get the size and color of it. But what's hard to do is figure out how to get the size and color of the adult, of the pupa. So the best way to do that, uh, you could go out with a net and kind of kick around, but it's actually even easier to not use a net and just pick up some rocks. And the little pupa cases will be attached pretty tightly to the rocks. And then you have to break one of those cases open and tease it out. So let's uh, kind of grab a couple of rocks here, see if we can find some pupa cases and show folks how to do that. That looks like a pretty good rock there. It looks like it's got some little goodies yeah, in this, there. Yeah, this is uh, one that might, oh yeah. Oh, we've got some pupa there, so, so you these... can see the little cases on the side of the rock. Wow. And, you know, that's what you need to pull off and open these little cases up, and you can see the pupa inside, and you're going to know what size to use. So let's go and, and tease one of these out. So I've got the rock here with these little pupa cases, and what you're going to need to do is just carefully take these cases off and look to see if there's a pupa inside. And a pair of tweezers is really going to help because it's a little bit like surgery. And for surgery, I need my glasses on. Sometimes I do this, but I don't have my tweezers with me. So you can use a forcep if, yeah, they, if they've got if, a tight bite. If they've got a tight bite and they're fine yeah. pointed. Um, in some cases, it'll be empty. But here's one with a little pupa inside. And then the next step is going to be to tease that out. So this is the underside of the pupa case. Some Caddis are going to be enclosed completely. Others will be open underneath like this one. Uh, this is um, called the little sister sedge or glossosoma. And it's, the pupa's in a little cocoon. And again, depending on the type of caddis, most, a lot of them will be in little cocoons like this, but not all. This one happens to be in a little cocoon. So then it even gets to be a little more like surgery where you have to open that cocoon up with the tweezers and try and get that pupa out. There, I just kind of broke the cocoon open and then you can tease very carefully, tease that pupa out. And if you do it successfully, what you're going to end up with, which is one I did just a little earlier, you're going to end up with a nice, very complete pupa where you can see the size and the color. These glossosoma caddis are small. This is like a size 18, kind of cream colored. The adults are black with a dark charcoal gray wing. So again, they're not at all the color of this pupa. So this is how, uh, once you know that, you know exactly what color pattern to use. I think John's actually has a pattern here. Yeah, I was able to dig around my fly box and find this little z-wing caddis. Yeah, that's a nice looking, nice looking pattern. Size was real crucial yeah. uh, in, in getting that guy out of the box and, and next to the natural. And as you can see, it's pretty close. Yeah. And so that's a Z-wing caddis. And you mm -hmm. can get these in all different sizes and colors for different caddis pupa. Um, we'll just leave it there. And then this is a little uh, beadhead pattern that I've, I often tie. You can see how the, the uh, this is CDC, how it traps bubbles of air. That's really cool because that's what the naturals are going to have glistening around them when they're swimming up to the surface, a little shiny bubble of air like that. So you can see how that CDC uh, captures that air. And, you know, that's a pattern I would use for this pupa as well. It's a little big, but pretty darn close. And here's one similar without a bead head that's smaller that's going to be just right on the money size-wise and color-wise. So. You know, that's the other advantage of having these right there in a tray is you can compare your patterns to them and really feel confident you've got one that's uh, looking like the pupa that's hatching. 
And I recommend fishing them both on a dead drift with a slight lift at the end or even a downstream wet fly swing. Yeah, and we're going to demonstrate that. Okay, so, good. Um, we should. Yes. We should. But that's, uh, that's the way to go about it. Get a good look at the caddis pupa and, and then you know exactly what kind of color and size of pattern to use. Helps a lot.